This is the fourth video in the Pinterest Clone Figma playlist. It's a playlist of very short videos. The goal is to get an eye for good UI and UX by copying real life apps and to master Figma. We started by making a quick wireframe for Pinterest homepage. Then we made the header and footer components. And in the last video, we made the card component for the pins. In this video, we will put it all together and use the components we made to make the actual design of Pinterest homepage. If you want to follow along, there is a link in the description and first comment. It's a Figma community file that you can duplicate and have a copy of it in your draft folder. And here's how it should look like a Pinterest homepage with some minor adjustments. I will start by placing a frame that will hold our design. So I will grab the frame tool by pressing the F key and I will add a MacBook Pro 16 inch frame. I'll grab an instance of the header component by selecting it, pressing and holding the Alt key and dropping it at the top of our frame. I will hover to its right side, press and hold the Alt key to resize both sides at the same time and pull it towards the frame. We've already left everything inside the header to fixed width while resizing. Except for the search bar, we change its resizing to fill container so it will spread to take up the extra space while the other elements will keep the same widths. Next, I will grab an instance of the create pin button by selecting it, pressing and holding the Alt key and dropping it into our frame. We'll consider this to be our footer but put to the side instead of the bottom. So to create the footer around it, while having it selected, I will press Shift A to add an auto layout frame to it. I'll name it the footer. Now I will pull it all the way to the top and bottom of the frame. Then in the design panel, auto layout settings, alignment and padding, I will change the alignment to center and bottom. And let's make the padding the same as the header. First, let's put it behind the header. So I will select it, right click on it, and send it to pack. I'll we'll select the drop down button and press and hold the Alt key while hovering towards the right side of the frame to know the distance between it and the frame. And it is 50 pixels. And I will select the profile image, press and hold the Alt key, hover to the top of the frame, and the distance between it and the top is 30 pixels. So select the footer, go to auto layout settings, alignment and set the padding to 50 right and left and 30 to the bottom and put the footer in place. Next, we'll create the main part of our page by placing the pins the same way the pins are placed in the Pinterest homepage. This part is the main reason why I made the wireframe in the very first video of this playlist. After making it, I knew exactly what I will do before I even started making the components. Now, all I need to do is repeat the same steps. So I'll grab an instance of the card component. Again, I will select it, press and hold the Alt key and drop it into our frame. We need to put five frames next to each other, so I'll press Shift A to add an auto layout frame around this pin. I'll set the padding to zero. I'll press Enter to select the pin. Then to duplicate it, I will press Command C, Command V. Then I will press Command V until I have five pins. I will select the auto layout frame and set the distance between the pins to 20 pixels. The pins should touch the bottom of the header and the left side of the footer. So I'll put them in place but they should also be centered with their space on the right side equal to the space on their left side. So while having their frame selected, I will hover to the left side of the frame and press and hold the Alt key to figure out what is the distance around them. The distance should be 160 on both sides, the same width of the footer, but now it's 118 on the left. So 160 minus 118, 42 pixels. We need to remove 42 pixels. We remove them from the size of each pin. We have five pins, so I will divide 42 by five, 8.4 pixels. So we'll get back to the card component and edit the size of the image and the card to 274 minus 8.4, 265.6 pixels. So I'll edit the size of the image to 265.4 pixels. And I also added the width of the card to 265.6 pixels. Now, if you select any of the cards that we copied, you will see that its width has been updated to 265.6 pixels. So I'll select the frame again and push it in place. I'll hover to the left side, press and hold the Alt key again, and now the distance is 160 pixels on both sides. Now to place the images in the same way as the Pinterest design, I'm going to change the images. By double clicking till the image is selected, then I can choose an image from my computer that has a different height. After changing the image, I deselect it, then I select the card and I pull it down or up depending on the size of the image. For the rest of the images, I can also use the Unsplash plugin to make the process faster if I want to change multiple images at once. So with Unsplash open, I just need to make sure the image itself is selected. And then with one click, 
I can change the image. Then after that, I can select each one and adjust the size independently. Now we are getting very close to the Pinterest design. The problem is we now have the images next to each other in an auto layout frame and an auto layout frame is either horizontal or vertical. So if we have it in a horizontal direction, we cannot place objects underneath them. Of course, we can do this manually by removing the auto layout frame and doing it freehand, but this is a lot of effort and we're going to lose the benefits of using auto layout. We have the elements aligned with one click. We can change the orientation. We can change the order. We can update the padding. All these benefits of auto layout, we will lose them if we go freehand. So the first thing I thought of was to duplicate this frame. But the problem is now we'll have different spacing vertically between each pin, depending on the size of the image. So instead of this, the solution is I will select this auto layout frame and I will change it to vertical direction instead of horizontal. I will add another auto layout around it by pressing shift A and I will call it main. This auto layout frame will hold all the pins in our page. I will remove the padding and change the distance between items to 20 pixels instead of 10. And I will select the frame inside it by pressing enter. I'll rename it to column one. Then I will duplicate it by pressing command C, command V. Then I will duplicate it again by pressing command V till I have five columns. I will select the main frame, press and hold the alt key while hovering to the left side to make sure that it is spaced properly and it's not. So I'll just push it in place. Now I'll just change the order of the pins by going inside the columns and using the arrow keys, just changing the order. Now we can see the rest of the pins. So in order to be able to see them, select the MacBook frame and then uncheck clip content. Then you can change the order of your pins, add new images. And when you're done, select the MacBook frame and clip content again. Now let's present it to have a look at how it looks like. Its size is bigger than my screen. So I'll go to options and scale down to fit. And here's how it looks like. We're not working on a prototype right now, but I want to be able to scroll. So I'll go back to the design. I will select the main frame. I will go to the prototype panel and change overflow scrolling to vertical scrolling instead of no scrolling. And for this to work, you have to pull the frame upwards. Now let's go to the prototype and try to scroll and it's scrolling. But the problem is it's scrolling above the header. We want it to be below it. So select the main frame again and check clip content and it's underneath the header. If you made it to the end of this video, tell me what you think. Is the design better this way or does it seem too empty? 